It's a well-known fact that without the right off-track development, a driver can do the qualifying lap of their dreams and still end up out in Q1. Just ask Alex Albon, Fernando Alonso, and perhaps soon enough, the Red Bull drivers. Of course we're being hyperbolic, but in a recent interview, it's been revealed that Red Bull can't seem to find any more gains with upgrades and are at a loss as to how to develop the RB20's concept any further. Given their seemingly major overhaul from last year's car, it comes as quite a surprise that this generation of cars' dominant force has seemingly stopped short of an optimized car design, allowing their competitors to close the gap, and, something that will be of massive concern to Red Bull, their rivals are showing no sign of the decline in returns faced by the Milton Keynes team. Now, obviously, as ever with news like this, which has become more common as the weeks go by, the expectations of their star driver Max Verstappen will be recalled from recent memory, and if Pierre Wash's recent interview is to be believed, then the team which he has seen so much success with is really starting to fail him and there could be massive consequences. Want to know what Red Bull's diminishing returns mean for the team? It'd be a tough enough season ahead of them if the rest of the teams just stood still, but surely this makes retaining their championships seem an impossible task. And stick around because forget their upgrades, Red Bull can't even get their story straight. There's just something about Red Bull and not taking accountability, eh? The Milton Keynes team have sunk towards the chasing pack over the course of the season, with the Bulls no longer being sure-fired winners, being beaten out by the likes of McLaren, Mercedes, and on occasion, Ferrari, and the team's technical director knows exactly whose fault it is. So then, who is it, Mr. Wash? Could it be the design team? Perhaps it could be the trackside team failing to maximize the car's potential. Oh, maybe it could be Susan in marketing. No, according to Red Bull's technical director and new messiah following Adrian Newey's departure, Pierre Wash, the fault lies at every other team in the championship, with Red Bull's faults being due to other teams not being good enough. If you're expecting me to say this is some kind of joke, I wish it was, as this is what Pierre had to say. We've hit the ceiling with our specific concept maybe, but it doesn't mean that it is the overall ceiling. In this business, you take ideas from the others as well. During the past two years, people took our ideas, but fundamentally, you need the others to find some other stuff as well to make a step. I think that is starting to happen now, and that gives you a different ceiling. I think we expected the opposition to come catch us earlier, to be honest with you. Wash would go on to give examples of the team expecting the competition being closer, slowing development. And as we will get onto in a minute, it could be a really worrying symptom of a far deeper issue at the team, something that will be of specific concern to one Max Verstappen. The Red Bull technical director continued, when we started the 2022 season, we didn't have the quickest car. Ferrari had the quickest car at the beginning of 2022. We expected a massive competition in 2023, but that didn't happen. We also expected the competition to be there more or less from the start of this year. We expected the others to be very close because the performance you can find with the car is of course limited under the same regulations. After the first four or five races, the others came back. Maybe with an offset and a bit of a delay, but we expected that from the start to be honest. While he would go on to claim that there were slight correlation issues between the tunnel, which they themselves have failed to upgrade as recently as last year, and the track, the overall messaging is that Red Bull are out of gas and it's all because the competition wasn't close enough, which is absolutely mental. Let's think back to Mercedes of last decade. While Ferrari did put up a fight over a few seasons and Red Bull won the odd race, Mercedes never needed other teams at their back to squeeze the opponent's neck some more. It was machine-like in nature, with progression coming from within to an extent that if they did need to react to other teams then they could. All of this comes back to something that Red Bull really have a track record with and a core issue that has put them in hot water at points, especially this year, and that is their refusal to take accountability and offsetting blame elsewhere. Just a month ago, Max Verstappen gave an interview claiming that he refused to believe that Red Bull have hit their development ceiling, claiming that the acceptance of that mentality would lead to laziness and complacency. In that interview, Verstappen concluded with a hopeful sentiment, saying, We just need to keep pushing. We need to keep bringing bits, and I know they will come, and hopefully they will be a little bit better than the other upgrades of the other teams. 
And this is a sentiment that would have been crushed by Pierre Wash's deflective claims that Red Bull's concept had run its course, with the only reason for it being not having enough inspiration from the other teams. Verstappen's claims following the Hungarian Grand Prix that the team needs to wake up because the upgrades weren't good enough now sounds all the more helpless given that the team's technical director has alluded to the fact that the upgrade plan is in more of a coma than a snooze. To remind you of what the world champion said, as we don't want you thinking that we're just making stuff up here, this was his response following the Hungarian Grand Prix. With all those upgrades, it's still not good enough. I do feel frustrated about that, because I had hoped it would have brought a bit more. Everything is working, but not the steps we want to make. I think it's just really hard to find a good balance. It's very easy to go over, and then you immediately lose quite a lot of time. And it's not just the direction of the car that needs ironing out by Red Bull, as it seems they can't even give a unified message, with multiple sources coming out with statements mere days apart that completely contradict each other, and it's not like it's just small fries at the team either. On the one hand, you have Chief Engineer Paul Monaghan claiming that Max Verstappen is in no way flattering a pig of a car, and on the other, you have Helmut Marko claiming that the RB20 is a beast for want of a better word, that only Max Verstappen is capable of taming. Now while it could just be put down to Marco doing as Marco does, following Pierre Wash's earlier comments we feel that perhaps the more anti-establishment member of the team may well be giving a more truthful outlook on the situation than one of the deflecting talking heads at the team. Marco has said what the fans have noticed all along, but something that Red Bull has refused to acknowledge, and that is that the car just didn't become problematic all on its own overnight while other teams caught up. Red Bull have dropped the ball and developed the car in an undesirable direction and it now truly hinges on the exceptional performances of Max Verstappen to carry the now limping team across the line at the end of the year. Here is what the Red Bull advisor had to say in his interview with Automotor and Sport. At the start of the season, we had a car that was as balanced as the McLaren is now. Then we took a wrong turn somewhere, the car has become a beast that only Max can tame. They made the car more and more unpredictable. It became more and more difficult to set it up and balance it. Those were special qualifying laps from Max. In the race, the superiority was gone. Like Mercedes at the beginning of the year, we are sometimes fast and sometimes slow depending on the conditions, sometimes even in the same race as in Silverstone where it rained in between. Compared to Monaghan's interview, where he claims that Max isn't at all flattering a bad car, Marco's interview will be sobering for the world champion who, possibly up until now, still holds out hope that the team can recover and give him a car that holds a true advantage again. McLaren have only bought one major upgrade package this year for Miami and are yet to develop the car further. Perhaps this is due to them being more careful in refining their upgrades behind the scenes before bringing them to the circuit. Given they have demonstrated this patience at the beginning of last year, scrapping their concept completely before the season even began and following a better route with a higher ceiling than their original concept for 2023. In 2024, they are repeating their slow and steady upgrade program, and if this is a mirror image of last year, then Red Bull could be gapped even further within the coming weeks, with no way of immediately responding with their own upgrade path. Well, at least if McLaren do bring upgrades, then Pierre Wash can have some homework to copy to slap onto their car. It's either that, or their final excuse for their poor upgrade direction will finally be removed and leave the real issues at the team stark naked for all to see. One thing is for sure, Max Verstappen will be hoping that all of this talk about potential ceilings and failed upgrades is one big bluff to catch the rest of the grid by surprise, because if it's not, then we might be due more radio fireworks at his home Grand Prix this weekend.